Deputy Catherine Connolly. Or Margaret Kian Corla, August, do spot about what number of Tomahaki Hucked, Kate Finkate, T. Feared in Runshaw, Nisan Ori May at an Aubershaw, Octon Tufosk, Late Chagamus, Clishta Ogum, O Kur on Chakta, Thomas Pringle, on Dua, Er Hain, on Runshaw, a car of Scornadola, August A. Free Vru. August, um, but what number of an rud a leman ama no go will shif igjailol lena firmori mar quid den aib shakas igjailol lena firmi mar quid den rechok agushin an rud a toy tastol go horid na firmori bioga at ishar nechira o tir conal shis go kiri thaga dialolo mar co fortner at an level kena because shitsen quid den rechok. Agus in vi an um, bila afu eroja o sargor, agus by jesh agumsa an chaktan cha hogan kanch fuin bilishin, agus kapum guil an bilishin ro laug, so ta me kid fin kid tif hair de bartha a kirk igriak majula afu eroja, agus majulish an rud a ta tifir den rudsha, ak an lasu a ta feki agumsa, ta she boiluk a mahasama dun a furumori, mar a mahansha. By she dig bra, er kibikin real to sato on, a gus kibikin ara ato e guot, con muelu e a horch dove, a gus anke dura ella, nor a vesna conchener shul, majule cap nua, e gian cupleblin ella, by she hees, by she der came nis hisle, mar nivai on um, zoning uh, talavirk de egest. I, I would like to first of all thank my colleague Thomas Springle for doing this. Actually, he was under pressure in relation to time for other reasons within our group, and he managed to get this on, over, uh, uh, for discussion tonight. And I'm certainly no expert when it comes to this matter, but I have read in preparation for tonight, and I've listened, and I have talked with the Irish Natura and Hill Farmers Association. And indeed, over the last number of years, I've attended all of their meetings in, in Connemara and throughout Galway, and listened to them carefully. And they come across to me as a very reasonable or organization. And they also come across to me as protectors of our environment who seek to farm in a sustainable way. Now, I want to just preface my remarks before I go any further to say that next week I'll be speaking on the climate, um, the new climate bill. And I listened carefully yesterday when it was up for discussion, and I believe it doesn't go far enough. So I am absolutely 100% determined to force this government to take serious action in relation to climate change. And equally, I wouldn't support any organisation that didn't put that to the fore. And I see this organisation doing exactly that. And what they're asking for is that the part of the cap, the negotiations, if this amendment goes through, will allow this government or a future government to take away the status of agriculture from their land. Now, it seems to me in dealing with the farmers like that, we're dealing with them as part, as we're looking on them as the problem and part of the problem rather than the most important part of the solution in relation to how to farm sustainably and how to deal with climate change. And if we remove that zoning agriculture from the land that they have farmed for a very long time in a sustainable way, then we are creating terrible problems. Uh, we're also dealing that with those small farmers in a most unequal way in the way that we have dealt with bigger farmers and with various derogations, as been mentioned by my colleague in relation to um, various things. So what I'm asking you, uh, Minister, and I, hear, I see that you're listening carefully, I wonder are you opposing this motion? Are you accepting the motion tonight that you would look at this with the view to not letting this amendment go through? And I would ask the question, who's pushing this amendment? Is it yourself as minister on the Council of Ministers, or is it who's doing it? Well, I understand you have a very important say in this, and you can stop this going through. Uh, I don't know where, maybe I've been unfair to you. Maybe it's not coming from you. But certainly, when I look at what they've presented to me and what they have argued, I can't see any, any reason for going ahead with this. And they specifically ask... They specifically ask a number of questions, which I think are very reasonable questions. And they say, why are they creating the baseline conditions under which the GAEC, the Good Agriculture and Environmental Conditions, and they're only talking about two, 
the, the figure to uh, that farmers can't achieve without undermining the eligibility of their lands. After this has been pointed out, why are they still determined to continue on this route? How much of this has been driven by, and this is important, Minister, and this is something we must address. And I say this as someone who's absolutely 100% behind climate change legislation. And question three, how much of this has been driven by the urgent need to offset carbon for the benefit of other sectors of society, both inside and outside agriculture? And what's your position? What's the position of Ireland as represented by you on this? So I, I unfortunately, am speaking before I hear you. So I, I'm hoping that you're actually going to tell us that you're not opposing this motion, which is a very specific, practical motion that's saying, please work with the small farmers, work with the organisations on the ground who are saying, please don't take away the zoning. Now, you may well come back, as my colleague has said, that you're not going to do that. But the thing is that if you allow that amendment to go through under GAEC2, it allows the government in the future or any other government to remove that. And then those first farmers are left in the position where they must seek a derogation from that in order to get their payments. So they're now at a disadvantage working from a much weaker position as they're supposed to equal partners in our fight for sustainable farming methods and for tackling climate change. So again, we have a once once in a lifetime opportunity this year, following the pandemic, following the declaration of a climate emergency on biodiversity last year, or the year before, now I'm losing track of time, to actually do something. And we see from the organization, the international agency, um, international, it just escapes me, that drew our attention to the high admission rates, notwithstanding COVID. So we're going in the wrong direction on every level. So we need to work with the farmers. We particularly need to recognise the small farmers who have struggled year after year to keep a sustainable type of living going that benefits all of us and benefits the environment. So I would appeal to you not to oppose this motion and to work with us. Thank you.